Hi, my name is Laura Morris. I'm one of the regional engagement managers here in the East for Speakers for Schools. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about virtual work experience. So I'm going to start sharing my screen and talk you through a little bit about us, a little bit about virtual work experience, and hopefully how it's not as scary as you might think. So for those of you that haven't heard of Speakers for Schools before, um, I just wanted to go through a little bit of background to explain who we are. So we were founded in 2010 by Robert Peston, and our aim is to end educational inequality. We aim to provide all young people the same access. So we're looking to level that educational playing field in order to give all young people the same opportunities. Since 2010, as you can see, we've, um, we've had quite an impact and um, we have actually supported over a million young people, um, particularly in the recent year or two with the COVID pandemic. That's made it a huge difference with the virtual work experience that we have to offer. So in terms of our services and what we do, we do have several programmes. We've got our inspiration programme which is very much what the name Speakers for Schools comes from um, in terms of actually developing that speaker network and delivering inspiring talks within schools. So that could be perhaps on a, a one speaker to one school basis. Um, or we do also have live broadcasts as well, which are available on our website for anyone to access. We have our experience programme, which is the work experience side of things. And that is about linking employers and young people in order to actually deliver those experiences to inspire young people when it comes to their career opportunities. We have our Youth Card app, which is all about um, offering discounts and offers to young people and in order to um, provide that access within their palm and it will support in terms of creating opportunities to young people moving forward. We have acquired two further apps, which we're currently working on how they're going to come together with our youth card to develop and support young people with progressing their careers and actually stepping into the workplace. So, for example, finding apprenticeships and things too. We have our book club. Um, so our national team book club brings together thousands of school students in order to attend a virtual book club. Um, we've actually joined forces with Anderson Press Publishing Group in order to launch this. And it's all um, about developing those literacy skills, boosting the confidence um, and providing the opportunity for a creative writing course. So to delve a bit deeper into virtual work experience, you might be wondering what it is. Um, firstly, uh, because I know traditionally a lot of work experience you know, might involve just one or two young people, perhaps going into an office or, or a retail outlet um, for their work experience. Um, but now this opens up a lot of other options as well. So perhaps for those young people who are unable to travel for whatever reason to go into a, a company in person or perhaps to enable them to experience more about um, an industry or a sector that's not on their own doorstep. It's an online work experience and what it does is it gives the young people the opportunity to experience these world of work and these career opportunities without having to travel to the employer's office or base. But it still allows them to gain that insight into a job role, which can be really helpful when it comes to a CV, but also just when it comes to gaining that understanding of um, a different organisation and industry to learn what it is that might actually appeal. So from an employer's perspective, why would you want to get involved? I think there's loads of reasons. I've got some here on the screen. Um, I think encouraging careers in your sector is key. So it could be, for example, that you might have um, a sector which is traditionally um, male or female dominated. So you might want to actually um, to look into that. And it's about encouraging that diversity within your sector. Um, or it could just be in case of um, you know, you might find that there's a shortage of, of staff in your sector and, you know, trying to explain to, to young people exactly what you do, what the career paths are and what the opportunities are within it um, can be invaluable. It ties in with developing that early talent pipeline. 
So, for example, if you're getting your brand name out there into a young person, into a school, then when they come to making those decisions in terms of whether they're looking for an apprenticeship or perhaps off to university, then, you know, you might be in their, in their mind when it comes to making those decisions about the, you know, your apprenticeship programmes um, and about your sector and your skills that are within that. Um, so I think that can be a, a really key reason. You might have your own corporate social responsibility values as well. And obviously, actually engaging with schools, engaging with young people can all be really, really helpful with regards to that. And as I touched upon earlier, that can also tie in quite nicely with perhaps any um, equality and diversity aims that you might have too. It can actually be a great opportunity to upskill your own staff as well. Um, so when it comes to delivering your work experience, you can obviously include staff from different departments. Um, and so it's a great opportunity perhaps to give your staff a chance to, to get in front of young people, deliver presentations, talk about their own career goals or their own career, career journeys. So it can also make a difference to them too. Obviously by engaging with students from the next generation, it can actually help you to gain some ideas as well. So for example, you might decide that you want to get their opinion on something, or um, you know, perhaps find out a bit more about you know, why it is that they believe there is a shortage in your sector. Um, so gaining those ideas directly from the young people can be really, really valuable. And of course, let's not forget that actually delivering work experience is a real chance to give back to the community and have some fun whilst you do it. So how does it work? So here at Speakers for Schools, there are several steps within the process in order before that session is delivered. So first of all, you actually create your advert on our online portal. Um, so that advert will be explaining what your work experience will look like, a bit more about your own company, and we'll advertise that on, your port on our portal, a bit like a jobs board, where the young people and the teachers can actually then see the opportunities that are available. We'll share that advert with our national network of schools and obviously the young people as well, both of whom log into the portal and can view all these opportunities. The young people will actually then apply to take part within your session. And then it's up to you to view and accept the applications for your session. But the portal allows you to do that in a safe and secure way. So it reduces any um, any sort of potential safeguarding risks as well that you may have been thinking of when it comes to, to working with, with young people. So for example, when those applications come through, you won't get the actual um, name of the young person. You wouldn't get their actual email address. So there's no way for you to actually directly contact them. And the same applies vice versa as well. Um, what you do get, however, is a need score. So obviously where I touched upon at the beginning that we are a social mobility charity, when a young person applies, you'll be able to see whether they are, for example, a high, medium, low need student. And that is based on an algorithm, including factors such as whether they're on free school meals, uh, whether they've had access to any other opportunities before. Um, and then so you can see if they're a high need student, potentially from a high need school, then they're less likely to have had an opportunity previously. So you may decide that when you're looking through your applications to take that into account and give them priority to attend your session. When you decided who it is that you're going to be taking on to your, your session, um, we will also make sure that um, you have the support in place to deliver it. So we have a team that will actually help to train you. Um, so for example, when you are delivering the session with Google Classrooms, we will actually um, give you a training session in how to use Google Classroom, what its features are. Um, so of course, we make sure that you're, you're comfortable and set up ready for your, your event to take place. For the work experience itself, that can be that can vary quite a lot in terms of um, the length of the session or the event. So it could be a twilight session, for example, um, which is only one to two hours in length. So that would take place, say, half four until six p.m. Um, so it's after school, um, and then that would be a great opportunity just to give a little bit of an insight into your industry um, without it being a, a full day's worth. We also have discovery workshops. 
So for the discovery workshop, rather than it being a young person logging in to participate in your event, it would actually be the teacher. And the teacher would log into your discovery workshop and be sharing that screen and your session with their class physically in the room. Um, so think about you being being beamed into perhaps a, a class of, of say 30 people and you may have then several teachers that do log on and do the same thing to their various classes. Then we have an insight day. So typically that's about five hours in length. Um, usually say something like 10 till 3 to fit within the school day, but we can obviously do shorter sessions as well. Or it could be a longer work experience placement, so perhaps that could be a full, full week. Um, but we are really flexible when it comes to how that virtual work experience will be delivered. And it's about you as the employer in terms of determining what resources you have and how you want to fit that together. So it could even be that actually rather than having um, applications coming through on the portal, you might just have a couple of schools that you've already got a good relationship with. So we want to develop a bespoke placement for them. So that is also something that we can work with you to deliver if you'd like. So in terms of what an actual session would look like, I know that it can be really hard to visualise how you go from doing that in-person work experience to taking that online or perhaps you've never delivered any kind of virtual work experience before and you don't see how um, perhaps as a small business that's something that um, that could work for you so I'm here to sort of tell you a little bit more about what that session would look like as I mentioned it's delivered on Google Classrooms the reason we use Google Classrooms is because of the level of service that that provides and by that, I mean all the interactive elements that we can include using that platform. And often, obviously, for a school point of view, Google Classrooms is something that a lot of young people are familiar with, too. So that also helps in terms of um, engaging with the schools um, and making it user friendly also. So the actual sessions itself um, could consist of, of various things. So you could be having very much like many of us are used to with a live video uh, where, you know, you would normally have your, your Teams call. Um, so that's absolutely something that can take place. You could be delivering a presentation. We do very much encourage employers to use the other functions as well. So there is the chat feature, the same as you're getting a lot, a lot of um, online platforms. And you've got the, the Q&A or the question and answer section too. Now, within Google Classrooms, what you can do is you can upvote. So if you're encouraging um, people to ask questions, if there's quite a lot of questions coming through, a way to help manage that um, is actually if you use the, the Q&A section and people can vote on what their most popular ones are, um, then obviously that can help you to see which questions are, are the most pushing that people really want to know the answer to um, and where to focus your, your time on. Polls we have are a great feature um, because they're so simple, but they're actually really, really effective. So you can ask a question with multiple options and then um, obviously you can wait to hear the answers from the, the young people and then use that as a discussion point, for example. Or they could be really good in terms of an icebreaker as well. The other feature that is used quite a lot are Jamboards, also known as whiteboards. Um, so what you can do is you can actually pop students into a breakout room. So say you had 30 young people attending your session and then you wanted to get them into groups to undertake a particular task. You could pop them into a breakout room and then they can all work together on a Jamboard. So think very much that's the virtual equivalent of getting some flip chart paper, getting your, your coloured marker pens and then getting some post-it notes and then, you know, doing some brainstorming and popping some ideas together. So some activities that we've done previously with various companies um, that have worked really well. So I thought it'd be useful to provide you an example of some of the activities that you might be able to do within a session. So branding tasks um, or anything marketing tends to work really, really well. So you could perhaps provide um, provide some kind of outline um, in terms of a, maybe a client brief 
um, and you could ask them to go and design a logo. So you, you could talk to them then about you know the colours and what they mean or the shapes and things. Um, and you, what do you want to include in a logo? How you know how simple or how complex do you want it to be? So it's something like that. And again, if where we spoke about those breakout rooms and those jam boards, you could be using those as a visual platform to design that logo together in groups. Or for example, they could be writing example social media um, posts. So you could give them an outline and discuss, for example, what's appropriate or the tone of voice of an organisation. So that's another simple task that could be easily done, perhaps within a breakout room within small groups. Employability skills um, are key. So, you know, it could be something as simple as a visual timeline where you encourage a young person to actually make a, a timeline of the um, of their career background. And they might instantly think, oh, I don't have a careers background. You know, I haven't had a job before. But actually, you could discuss, well, what about things where maybe they they took the lead on a particular project at work or perhaps they were part of a football team? Um, and they, you can pop that visually into a timeline and it just gets them to start thinking about those skills and how they can actually be relevant for the workplace when it comes to, to completing that sort of a task. You could be looking at example CVs. You could share a CV on the screen um, and then discuss sort of what you like about it, what you don't like about it, what you know, perhaps they think is missing or needs to be added. You could look at a job description. Um, then you can research the key skills that um, that that job is that that job requires that they're asking for. Um, are there any skills that are particularly just for that job role? Are there any key skills that they feel that maybe would apply to all job roles? So again, great discussion points that you can easily do as there is part of a, a large group using that chat function and the Q and A's and the polls to maybe vote or um, in smaller groups where you pop them into groups and they can discuss on their Jamboard in their rooms there as well. Again, problem solving, that's a great one. So actually it could be that you have um, a live, you know, a live problem in your business that you want them to discuss or perhaps a, a client brief. Um, so it could be something um, even do like the environment. How do we reduce water consumption? You can get them into groups to start brainstorming, coming up with some ideas perhaps putting even a small presentation together. And then at the end of the session, you can get each group to deliver that presentation back and can discuss and give some feedback. You can look at communication as a wider skill. So you could look at creating instructions and how important that can be. That could be as simple as, simple as something just as making a cup of tea. What do we do first? Do you put your milk in? Do you get your tea bag out? Where's your teaspoon? You can look at all of these things and then actually put it all together in an order and think, so what would happen if that wasn't in order? What would happen if you missed an instruction out? Something that might be common sense to one person might not be for somebody else. Maybe they don't drink tea normally, so it's all completely new. So those are the sorts of things that you could think about just as a really simple task in communication. Go back to using those polls, maybe do a myth busting quiz, um, you know, pop some questions out there. Um, maybe about your, your sector or your business and um, and get them to vote what they think the answers are and then discuss actually, you know, how many people do work within your industry or perhaps, um, you know, it's something like what sort of materials are used or how many jobs are there in the area and um, what sort of qualifications are needed to, to be successful. So those are all sorts of quizzes that you could come up with and get them to vote and then discuss. So it just helps to make your session two-way and interactive rather than it just being you know someone just doing a presentation and talking to a room it's much better if you've got that that two-way piece obviously the other option is use that question and answer perhaps pull in those um those other staff members if you've got any or uh, or other team members if you've got an apprentice that's great you can come in talk to the young people um and then that can be really really relatable and they can help us answer those questions that they've always wanted to ask that perhaps they've just never had the opportunity to ask before. So hopefully that gives you a few ideas in terms of what an actual session can look like. In terms of the number of young people that would attend a session on virtual work experience, um, you would, our average number is probably in the region of around 25 to 30 attendees per session. 
um, which gives a great is a great number when it comes to doing those breakout tasks because you've got enough young people there to to pop into groups and then um, you know the time to to deliver their their feedback back into the room with everybody too. So we work with 14 to 19 year olds um, and as part of our safeguarding as well, um, we always make sure that there's always at least five individuals in a room at any one point. Um, so that's just one of our policies here at Speak of the School that can just help to make sure that, um, that the session is a success for everybody. However, what are the keys to a successful virtual work experience? I think there's a there's just a few things to cover here. Number one, be authentic. You might just, that's the easiest thing, is just making yourself be authentic, be relatable. Don't try and be somebody that you're not. If you are a small organisation, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to be thinking about, you know, trying to make yourself sound bigger than you are or anything like that. That's exactly what people want to hear about. They want to hear from real people doing a real job in the real world. And that's exactly what virtual work experience can do to help. Keep it simple. Don't try and overcomplicate it. Don't try and provide lots and lots of information about your organisation or your, your job roles. Um, provide some, absolutely. You have to provide enough to, um, to make it obvious what you do. Um, but you don't want to overcomplicate it. Um, even in terms of the language that, that's used as well, um, I think it's something that we're all we're all prone for in our own industries is using anachronisms or certain words that, that are um, you know relevant to the industry. So absolutely, keep it simple and keep it short. As I mentioned, two-way interaction absolutely crucial. So I think um, there's nothing worse. We've all been on the receiving end of a, of a death by PowerPoint. Um, and actually, you know, that can be be really off-putting. So by gaining that two-way interaction, that makes it more beneficial both for you and them. Include a next step. So at the end of your session, try and think, well, actually, what can a young person do now? Where can they go to maybe find out some more information? Do you have a particular, you know, internship or apprenticeship scheme that you want to direct them towards or that they can go and have a look at to find out some more information? Or perhaps there's, you know, there's a wider board that covers your industry that that would be great for them to go and have a look at. So those are the four top tips for the key to having a successful virtual work experience. So hopefully you realise that actually it's quite simple. You can plan a session. It doesn't have to mean that you're you're there for a whole week if you don't want to. If you want to just do a 90 minute session, absolutely fine. Um, and there's all sorts of things and all sorts of activities that you can do. And it will mean the world to a young person. Just you having that conversation with somebody and telling them about what you do, that could actually inspire someone to make their, connect, their next career step and really make a difference. So if you would like to get involved and perhaps consider discussing the option further, then please do pop us an email or you can visit our website for more information too. So thank you so much for, um, for joining me today and listening to my presentation. I really do hope that um, it's something that you'll look to do in the future um, and you can get in touch with us, as I say, to discuss further and find out how it might work for you. Thank you very much.